In this video, I'll share with you why I use an SSD, the filing system that I have inside my SSD. I try to keep it organized somewhat. Then we'll move on to the organization system in Final Cut Pro, how it's organized into libraries, events, and projects. I'll share with you the simple way that I organize it in Final Cut Pro. And I'll also show with you a couple faster ways. I think they're faster, but they're a bit more complex and the use cases for each organization system. And lastly, I'll share with you how I transfer my libraries to an external hard disk drive. And there are a few settings I do within Final Cut Pro just before I transfer them to save space. So let's get started on the SSD. So this is the SSD I use. This is the SanDisk E61, 500 gigabytes. I think this was the budget option, but it's actually been all good. I just, I'm just thinking of upgrading to one, which is one terabyte, because when I edit 4K files, it's, it's getting a bit small. But so far it's working fine. It still works fine. It's all good. All right, now why I edit off an SSD, I just don't like using space on my computer ultimately. I don't want to make my computer slow, so I edit off an SSD, and SSD is fast. I just think of it as a big flash drive that's fast. So I put all my files onto the SSD, or the A-roll, or the B-roll, and the library before editing, and this is how I organize the SSD. So in my SSD, I have a few folders, right? And within each folder, there are a few folders. So let's just open. <laughs> I think it's easier to show rather than tell. So let's open Finder. So this is my SSD. And within my SSD, you can see a few folders. One is the template folder. I put the one there so it's at the top. And these are different things I'm working on. I'm reluctant to say project because project is the terminology that we'll use later on for something else. So template folder, and then this is one thing I'm working on, this is another thing I'm working on, and this is another thing I'm working on. All right, so what's inside the template folder? So within the template folder, I have two folders, the final output folder where I have my final output, and videos. Now within videos, I have my A roll folder, my B roll folder, and this music and sound effect folder. So I'll show you what that looks like on this diagram. So in each project and in the template folder, there is the video folder and the final output folder. Within the video folder, there is the A roll, B roll, and music and sound effect folder. Hopefully you got that in my demonstration previously. And why I do it like this, because it's easy to find things and organize things. And I'll just show you what I do when I want to create a new thing I'm working on, right? So when I want to create a new thing, <laughs> a new video, say, if I right click the template folder, I duplicate it and then right click, rename, rename it goated video. It's gonna, this is the goated video, that's why. And then as you can see, if I click the goated video folder, we have the exact organization system we had in the template folder. It's nifty, isn't it? <laughs> All right. So in these other things I'm working on, you can see that if we ignore these two files, we have the final output folder and the video folder, and these will be populated with actual things because I use this for actual projects. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? Do you understand it all? Hopefully you do. And now let's say I want to create a new video in Final Cut Pro. Where do I put this library? I put it in the, say, Goated folder or the Tune Out the Noise folder. See, there's the library there. So this is what I do. I'll open Final Cut Pro. See, these are other libraries. But let's say we want a new library inside this Goated video folder. So let's just rename this go to video and we'll just put it just in the the folder here boom and then this is the library and within the library we have events and we don't have a project currently I'll go more in depth as to what a library is what a event is and what a project is soon 
but that's pretty much how I create a library within the folder in my SSD. All right. So we're going to explain, I'm going to try to explain what a library is, what an event is, and what are projects, the organization system within Final Cut Pro. And then I'll go back to Final Cut Pro and link it back to this go to video library we just created. So in Final Cut Pro, there is a hierarchical organization system. So in one library, you can have more than one event. And in one event, you can have more than one project. For example, this event has three projects. This schematic I got from Apple itself, so hopefully you understand that. So think of this as maybe kernel, lieutenant, private, or uh, the library, your local library, event, maybe a bookshelf, and the project, the book. You know, something like that. All right. Now, there are a few ways you can organize libraries, events, and projects in Final Cut Pro. There's a simple way where it's just one library, one event, one project. So something like this. One library, one event, one project. Ignore this, ignore this. That would be it. So one library, one event, one project. And this video demonstrates that well. So this is a library, this is a library, this is a library. So in this library, we have one event. This is an event, the star-shaped icon, and one project. See, number one. So one library, one event, one project. I'll show you what that looks like in Final Cut Pro. That was the Spotlight video. If we open it up, let's ignore the goated video for now. So in this Spotlight Effect library, we have one event. In that event, we have one project. Very simple. And then once I'm done with this, I just send it to my HDD, my external hard drive. All right. So, yeah, that's the very simple way of doing it. All right. I usually do this organization system for more complex projects where there's a lot of things inside each video. Like the amount of resources required to make one of these projects, one of these videos is a lot. So I want to keep it simple. So yeah, this project will result in one video. So one library, one event, one project results in one video. The project is a video. All right. Now, if you want to organize it in a different way, here's how I sometimes do it. So sometimes I'd have one library, one event, and within that event, I'd have a couple projects. And I do this when I have several videos that all use the same footage. For example, if you look at my tutorials on Final Cut Pro, a lot of the outros are literally the same, right? So these two projects utilize the same video. So I don't want to create a new library and I have to sync the audio clips again. I have to transfer it to the correct file again and it takes too much work. So I just create two projects within that one event. Now, once that event starts to get full, sometimes what I do, I'd create another event within that library. So when I create another event within that library, I can have a couple of projects or, I don't know, five in that one event. In the other event, I can have a few projects as well. So when I have several videos that all use the same footage, for example, the outro is all the same, and one of the events gets full, that's when I create another event. So let's see an actual demonstration of that. So let's open this bulk editing day library. And as you can see, I have a few events in this library. So let's go to the Final Cut Pro event. And as you can see, in this Final Cut Pro event, there are a few projects. Overlay transitions, add fonts, edit out pauses. And each of these are its own video. And this got a bit too full. I didn't like so many projects in here. So what I did, I opened up a, another event for CapCut. So here are all my CapCut tutorials. I just don't like this being so full. All right. 
So that's my organization system. So this bulk editing day one is more like that. So I have one library, say Final Cut Pro, CapCut, within each of these events, you know, overlay transitions, um, another YouTube video, and then in CapCut, how to sync audio and video, and another one, how to change frame rate. So that's how I organize it in Final Cut Pro. And then after I'm done with a library, what I do, I delete my generated library files and then I transfer it to an HDD. So here's what I mean by that. So let's go on to my Finder. Sorry, let's go into Final Cut Pro. Let's say I'm done with this Spotlight Effect video. If I highlight the library, I can delete the generated library files. And the reason I do this is because, you know, I use optimized files and that takes up space and I don't want my HDD to get so full so fast. For example, this library takes up 8.7 gigabytes, which actually isn't that much, but then sometimes it's a lot more. But say I don't want it to take up so much space, what I can do, I can go file, delete generated library files, delete render files, or delete, delete, just delete things I don't need ultimately. Okay, so it's 8.7, right? Remember the number, just click away, click on it, becomes 78 megabytes, so it's very, very small now. So if we close this before it starts rendering again. Cool. I can now transfer that whole video, I mean the whole folder on my SSD for that video onto my HDD. And the reason why I don't have my HDD here is because all my ports on my computer are plugged in. <laughs> I have the microphone, I have the mouse, I have my SSD. But usually I'd have my HDD pop up here and then I just transfer it boop, boop into my hard drive. All right, uh, and here are the settings and the HDDs that I use, I used the Seagate expansion two terabyte one in the past. And then now I'm currently using this WD My Passport for Mac 5TB. I keep upgrading the size every time I buy another external hard disk drive. And the cool thing about transferring it to a HDD is that after I'm done, once the folder is in the hard drive, I can just transfer it back to my SSD and edit where I stop, where I left off. So overall, I hope that was helpful. Overall, I use an SSD, I edit off an SSD. It's fast, I think of it as a fast flash drive that is an extension of my computer storage so I don't have to use up space on my computer. Then I organize my SSD into each video thing. So spotlight thing, tune out the noise thing, bug, edit day, bug editing day thing. And then in Final Cut Pro, I'll have the library inside here or here or here, whatever project I'm working on, whatever thing I'm working on, I mean. And then the simple way is to have one library, one event, one project. Alternate ways of organizing it is having one library, one event, a few projects, or one library, a few events, a few projects. Then after I'm done, I delete generated library files, or delete, delete, optimize media and proxy media. And then I transfer it to my HDD, and I can always transfer it back. I hope that was helpful. I know that was a very technical video, and may not be the most technically correct, but I, that's just how I do it. But thanks for watching. My name is Junius. I help people make and strategize educational content. For more Final Cut Pro tutorials, check out my playlist here. And I'll see you in the next one. See ya.